Hello everybody, I'm in the Littlewood, also known as Martin, and welcome back to the channel. So today, something slightly different, and before we get started, if you want access to this brand new first-person shooter, Battle Royale from Ubisoft, the only way currently is via Twitch Drop. So if you don't know what that is, basically, you come on over to Twitch, you hook up your Ubisoft account to your Twitch account, you watch my stream, and basically, you'll be put into a lottery in order to win a copy of the game. So if you want to come on over, that'd be great. The link is twitch.tv forward slash in the Littlewood. Nice simple but without further ado here is my quick and simple guide to hyperscape as i do with any of my other guide videos we're going to run through this in chronological order so here we are inside of the lobby in front of you on the left hand side there is a hologram which opens your locker and on the right hand side there is a hologram that opens the party system you can also access the party system anytime by pressing escape and then hitting o and that will basically bring up the same menu the big orange portal dead ahead of you is for matchmaking and there is also another portal to your right hand side which takes you to the battle pass and whilst we mentioned the battle pass, something really cool that the team told us about in regards to this game is that you can gain XP towards your battle pass even when you're not playing yourself. You can actually go on over to Twitch, watch somebody playing the game, and basically you'll passively level up over time. But don't be fooled into thinking that you can just leave it on overnight and you're going to get tons of experience points. It's obviously limited to an undisclosed amount each day. And then of course outside of that, the way you level up the battle pass is pretty standard. You play the game, the better you perform, the more stars you receive in various tick boxes and cards at the end of the game so these can be awarded for things like kill count damage blocked damage dealt survival time placement and loads more on the screen right now is an example of a game that i absolutely smashed and i got five stars in every single card and then a game where we died not too long after the first drop now of course this means you can get a maximum of about 30 per game there are going to be challenges in this game because if you go in the matchmaking menu you can see there's actually an empty menu for challenges so in the full release i'm guessing that's going to be a thing now there are three more portals in the main body of this hub over on the right hand side we've got another one which is regarding news and updates and on the left hand side we've got two that are currently undisclosed i'm guessing maybe one of them is for ltms and the other one with the trophy could well be a ranked mode and there is one more teeny tiny sneaky portal at the very back of the lobby so if you go past the orange portal around the back of it you can actually find one there to return to the training hub that you went in when you very first loaded the game up so it's time to queue up for our first game and currently the only playable mode is tree which feels actually really nice having played the game for a few hours but i'm sure they're going to dabble in other sizes and other variants in the future so now we're in the game and you're going to be plonked into one of the four lobbies available around the map they're basically put in each of the four corners and what's interesting about this is it means that if you jump from say the southwestern corner but you really wanted to land at a northeastern location if a team has obviously started over there you are going to be landing late so bear that in mind before we even talk about looting and shooting let's talk about the display that is going to be over the screen at all times let's go through the hood so along the top we've got a familiar wide bar compass basically as you turn it turns as well makes it easy to call out directions and numbers for where enemies are in the bottom left corner you've got your teammates names health bars and you can even see their loadouts now you can't actually see how far along their weapon or their hacks are upgraded but you will notice when they have maxed one out because it will turn yellowy orange now we move to the top right corner of the screen and the first thing right here you would think is the player count but it's not this is actually the number of teams that remain so say there was just you and one other squad left it would say two but there could be upwards of three enemies still standing so don't let your guard down just yet i personally quite like it because i think it keeps that intensity about the game right until the end rather than going like oh there's only one left let's just try trick shotting him like that's not going to be a thing but either way let's carry on so the next one along is the assisted kill count which is basically if you help towards a kill that one of your teammates gets you get a little thumbs up and then the final one is how many times you've revived your fellow teammates all right it's game time you can press tab to open up the map as you're four through the sky towards the ground and if you want to place a marker it's middle mouse button and this is the same input if you want to tag items or mark enemies inside of the game and if you do a double press with a middle mouse button it will do the alert ping to say danger this way now these yellow boxes often have better loot in them than the regular old spoils you find on the floor you can be lucky enough to find fully upgraded weapons or hacks or even both which you can't really complain about if you press the number three that'll bring out your melee weapon and that can smash through those boxes in an instant there's also another use for the melee and that is to get inside of buildings you'll notice loads of buildings that have got these gold honeycomb kind of glass walls on them give them a single whack you're in and the loot is yours as you're going around the streets of the city you will notice that there are these orange circular jump pads basically if you run over to them they'll fling you up into the air and help with the verticality of your movements and just on the topic of verticality actually throughout the entire game regardless of what your loadout is you always have a double jump which is wicked so i mentioned a moment ago about fully upgraded weapons and hacks obviously 
Normally, you could be super lucky and just find these inside of a box. Or if you down an enemy who's been upgrading their own, then you can steal theirs. But if you want to achieve one by yourself, it's really, really simple. Whenever you find a duplicate of either a hack or a weapon inside of the game that you're currently holding, you can fuse the two together and it goes up a rank. And then it's entirely dependent on which hack or weapon you're actually fusing as to what upgrade you're going to get. Either it could be a quicker cooldown timer or it could be a bigger magazine size. One really cool detail we did notice is that when you max out any of the weapons, they seem to change their appearance entirely, which I thought was a really nice extra bit of spice. And also the HUD colorings, as I mentioned earlier, now appear as like an orangey yellow, which means when you're looking at a loot pool from a team you've just downed, it's really easy to identify the higher grade materials. Maybe we could benefit from knowing if other items are higher than, you know, tier one, like maybe have like the traditional MMO coloring systems of like, you know, gray, green, blue, and then the orange at the end. But anyway, let's get back to the advice. So when you come across one of these hacks in the world, whether it's one from a loot pool or if you find it randomly spawned, if you want to swap it with your current hacks, you hold down the interact key, which for me was F, and then you either left click or right click to swap it with the one at the bottom of your screen. Now, I know the question on everybody's lips is probably, are there any heals in this game? Can you pick up any consumables? As of yet, no. And that's because you actually get health passively over time if you haven't been shot at in a little while. So that does mean if you have good maneuverability and you can hide away in a corner, you can replenish all the way from one HP to completely maxed out. But never fear, there is also a hack available which can actually heal you up. So let's run through all the hacks real quick. So of course, let's start with the heal. When you do this, you whack down a token on the floor. There's a large circle radius around it and anybody stood in that pool will basically have heightened health regeneration for as long as it stands. Teleport is our next one and very simply put, you blink forwards instantly. Kind of like Tracer's blink, I guess, but you could do this in any direction. Literally, wherever you're looking, you will move in that direction so you can go straight upwards if you wanted to. Another fairly similar ability is one called Slam. So when you activate this, your character is flung up into the air making an arc in motion and after a moment, gravity will pull you down to the ground really heavily and you'll do a cool superhero landing, damaging anybody in the nearby area and lifting them off the floor so they don't have any movement capabilities. Shield is our next one and originally we didn't know whether this was just very tanky or if it made you invincible. We asked on the Discord straight to the developers and they said for as long as it's active you take zero damage. Invisible! Just like a magician's trick you vanish for a brief period of time. Now I haven't played with this one enough to know exactly how invisible you are whether it is completely or whether you have some kind of like weird ethereal glow about you. From what I've seen when others have used it there's a momentary blip where there's a couple of pixels left where they were and then nothing so i think it is just a straight up vanish the mine this seemed to become a more popular pick as our games went on during the little play test so basically this one you place down a mine it has a circle radius and if an enemy gets too close it will explode and even if an enemy passes through the circle but isn't close enough to make it blow up it will then start pursuing that enemy and chasing them down we did have one chasers in one of our matches and it seemed to be that shooting it does actually delete it so it's a bit of a give and take. Reveal. This one can give you a huge tactical advantage. Basically, it puts a marker on an enemy after shooting a large rectangle forwards to scan. And it doesn't matter if there's a wall in the way, a car, a building. As long as they're close enough, it's going to light them up. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this one just yet, though, because when you do damage to an enemy currently, their health bar does still remain visible for a brief duration after you've shot them. So even if they manage to get around the corner, you still have kind of an idea where they are. So maybe there'll be some balancing on that in the future. Oh, just a quick note on being revealed as well. Um, don't bump into the cars. If you walk into a car, the alarm will go off and it will reveal you to all nearby enemies. I learned that the hard way. This is now probably the goofiest one. It's the ball. You jump inside of a giant hamster ball and you bounce around the world. It does give you an initial lift when you first use it. And if you hold space bar, it will continue to try and keep going at maximum height. Whereas if you don't hold space bar, then your bounce will get lower each time. Bear in mind with this one though, that if enough damage is dealt to it by enemies then you will fall out of the ball immediately and then finally we have the wall this is just a gigantic wall honestly whichever way you're facing whichever way you're pointing you whack up a wall it is humongous and you can delete it but it requires a lot of firepower one really cool thing as well is that you can treat it like maze ice wall from overwatch if you shoot it directly downwards it will basically lift you to the top of it when it erects and this is the hack that I think you need to be most careful with because if you get caught between a wall and a piece of the terrain, you can actually get stuck. We had a round where a friend of ours was a ghost. They got caught between the wall and had no means of attacking it in order to get free. 
But now I guess you're asking, what's a ghost? So essentially, when you die in this game, you become a ghost. So you're not fully out of the game until all of your teammates have gone down as well. What you can do as a ghost is run around the world as normal. You have your double jump and you can also still mark things as well, like enemies, items, whatever else it may be. But your main objective is to get back to one of the respawn triangles that appear when an enemy is slain. So make sure that you stand on the nearest one to your teammates. They'll come over, interact with it, and you'll be back in the game. And it really isn't that long of an interaction either. So you could probably now understand why consumables are in the game because resing is so swift. So how does everybody get pushed together inside of this game? Is it the storm, the gas, the wall? Nah. It's the decay. Because the way the world reduces in this game is really, really cool. So there'll be an announcement saying that a district or an area is due to close and a timer appears. As the zero mark grows closer, you'll start to see tiny triangles fragmenting all the textures of everything around you. Once that countdown hits zero, you obviously begin to take damage if you're still inside of that area. But what's really cool and helps you get back to the zone a little bit quicker is the fact that now everything has no clip. You can literally run through anything and everything to get straight to the zone which means you can get there faster but you also have no cover so anybody watching from the inside of the zone they're gonna get easy pickings they're also breaking the mold a little bit by not having a very simple circle shrinking over time instead these districts and zones close really sporadically which means sometimes you could have a fine zone that you're stood in a dead zone in front of you and then the rest of the game is going to be taking part on the other side of that dead zone so it's all really strange and no two maps end up looking the same just a little side note on this as well so we had a game in the late Later part of the playtest after the time was technically over where there were only eight squads in the game and as we began the dive process we noticed that the map immediately shrunk to accommodate the amount of players in the lobby which i thought was really cool anyway back to the game so we're down to the final few teams the zone is tiny so let's introduce another way to win shall we so instead of eliminating all enemy players you can instead opt to collect the crown it will spawn somewhere relatively central to where everybody's playing and all you have to do is grab it and hold it for 45 seconds seconds without dying as you'd expect though holding the crown makes you completely visible to every player in the lobby and all hell breaks loose so congrats contender you did it you won your first game of hyperscape uh, all right well maybe you watched me win one but now you have all the details to make it happen for yourself and just before you head off here is some final fast fire bullet points that i think will be handy to know number one you can cancel any of the ongoing hacks with a simple left click so say for example you had armor on you can break out of it by left clicking to start shooting again if you use the ball to go into midair you can left click to break out of it and the same with slam as well if it launches you into the air you don't have to dedicate to the superhero ground pound number two there is absolutely zero fall damage inside of this game so play to your heart's content and leap off those buildings number three there doesn't seem to be a world height limit which is incredible so consider combining your abilities to get some serious high and get eyes on the enemy so for example i use teleport to go directly upwards and when i was at the peak of that jump then i activated either ball or slam to go up even higher and i could see for miles number four kind of training on from the previous one it doesn't matter how high you go your slam will always do the same amount of damage so don't be forwarded to thinking like oh well i slam off a roof rather than doing it from the ground that should do more right no number five keep an eye on the hud in the dead center of the screen whenever you down an enemy it will actually give you information regarding how many other people from that squad are still up and active sometimes you'll see one score which means you've downed the first player from that trio sometimes you'll see two and then three will let you know that the entire squad has been wiped and you can breathe for a moment number six the auto aim pistol is ridiculous i'm very certain that this is going to get nerfed basically there are two pistols in the game one of them does heightened damage but the other one has auto aim and it is really aggressively easy um if you literally are looking at an enemy in front of you you have the pistol out and you shoot it's almost definitely going to land on them the reticle doesn't have to be anywhere close to them number seven emotes sprays if you want to do either of those things then you can go ahead and press the number five six or seven on your keyboard and of course you can set these in the locker number eight snipers have no drop off it's like a laser have fun bop heads stand on top of the red tiger that's where all the snipers seem to go and finally number nine bear in mind that when a zone closes all of the respawn points within that zone are also going to vanish just thought you should know. All right, well, there we go. That is everything that I've got for you today. If you do have any more additional questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. By the time this video releases, I'll have been playing the game for about six hours, so I might have a little bit more information on offer. And you can always come over to my Twitch stream and ask me something in real time. Thank you very much for watching. I know this is a little bit different because it's not Fortnite, but we all love Battle Royales, right? So have a wonderful day. Stay safe in lockdown and wash your hands, you dirty bugger. And I'll see you all next time. Ta-ra.